It's overreaction Monday here on Vikings Now. Mitchell Renz from Chat Sports ready to go through the top three overreactions after a very impressive win for the Minnesota Vikings over the Green Bay Packers. Now I'm going to warn you, I'm going to get hot takey. It's going to get spicy, and if you can't handle spicy takes or food, this might not be the video for you. So the reason why there's a lot of excitement right now in Minnesota is because anytime not only can you beat the team that's really been the most difficult team to beat in this division, but as far as I'm concerned, man, anytime I can take down Aaron Rodgers, love to see it. And not only did you take them down, you embarrassed the Green Bay Packers where a lot of people – didn't think it was going to happen. So if you're excited that the Vikings are 1-0, then I want to give me y'all a skull down in the comment section. If you come across this video and you don't type skull, I'm going to question whether or not you even got a pulse because if that game doesn't get you fired up, where you embarrass Aaron Rodgers, Justin Jefferson looks like that dude, Kirk Cousins looked like one of the best damn quarterbacks in the NFL. I don't know what it's going to take, so I want to see some skulls. Let's get in now to some of these overreactions after the Green Bay Packers game. Kirk Cousins can win NFL MVP. Wait, really? We're going to go this far already? Yeah, if, it was, if this game was actually close, like if the Packers' offense would have showed a pulse, I think Cousins, with this new offense under Kevin O'Connell, with the wide receivers that he has, especially Justin Jefferson, he could have threw for 400 yards. They didn't stop him. 23 of 32, 277 yards, two touchdowns, a quarterback rating of 118.9. I mean, I look at this year, and I look at this game, the only reason why he didn't put some of those numbers is because they took their foot off the gas a little bit. You remember a few years ago, and I'm going to hop into a time machine because I do think Matt Ryan and Kirk Cousins are two very similar quarterbacks where if you surround them with a lot of talent, they have enough tools in their tool shed to be able to get it done and pinpoint and pick apart defenses. Cousins needs to win some of those big games, which absolutely should put him in contention, especially if he can win some of those big games like you just saw here for NFL MVP. Because from a number standpoint, over the past two seasons, 35 touchdowns, 33 touchdowns. If he puts up a year like Matt Ryan had where he throw for almost 5,000 yards, you have 38 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, you win this division, and you're one of the top teams in the NFL, you have to be in the NFL MVP discussion. And... <laughs> it makes me laugh because I was talking to producer Patrick Seaton before this game about Mike Zimmer. Doesn't the entire locker room, almost like the entire city, feel totally different underneath Kevin O'Connell? That guy's got so much swagger in that locker room, it makes me very happy that Mike Zimmer is just probably sitting in his living room right now staring at all those deer heads that he has hanging around everywhere. Let's go to the next overreaction here on Vikings now. They're a top three team in the NFC. And pause. You could see them even being the best team in the NFC. I said it. I know. Personally, here are some of the teams that lost. Green Bay Packers. They look bad. The Los Angeles Rams. I mean, that's the only other team where I could sit here and say, well, you know, they had a bad game against Buffalo. Buffalo looks legit. But after well, the two games I saw, the Vikings look like a better team. Dallas <laughs> put up three points. They're, they don't have Dak Prescott. That, that team's, they're done. Arizona Cardinals got boat raced up against Kansas City. The 49ers, yeah, it was downpouring rain. They lost to the Bears. <laughs> the Bears, that's a joke. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles, they played a solid game. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Tom Brady, they played a solid game. But if you don't think that the Minnesota Vikings deserve to be in the top three teams in the NFC... I think you're crazy, man. So give me a Y for yes and for no. That's what chat sports is all about. I know. I'm the one on here getting emotional, talking to you guys about this overreaction. But I have social media. I have a television. Hell, the fact that my dad, who's not even a Vikings fan, was talking to me about the Vikings today on my way to work, that tells you everything you need to know. There's a lot of excitement, and they deserve it. The hype train full steam ahead, and we're going to keep it riding here on Vikings now. So I want to see some yeses. Let's go to the next overreaction after the domination of 23-7 against the Packers. The purple people eaters are back. I'm a sucker for when people in sports today, NFL players, appreciate the greats because I get it, and I am a big believer in this. These players can't do what they do if it wasn't for previous regimes, previous teams, like the Purple People Eaters, setting a foundation. Why does that matter? Because if the football was bad 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 
Would, it, would there even be football now? I don't know. Maybe we'd be dealing with what baseball is dealing with because there's nothing going on over there. But for these purple people eaters, you're going up against not, you know, you're not only going up against the NFL MVP, you're going up against the back-to-back -back NFL MVP. This man has got a Super Bowl. He's got four MVPs in general. You sacked him four times. You hit him five. You made him cut his ridiculous hair, which might be the greatest stat that we could throw out here. Three tackles for loss. And Daniil Hunter and Darius Smith. Dude, they're just getting started. I was waiting for them to hang up Aaron Rodgers by his feet and try to get out all of his freaking lunch money because they were just all over the football field, and that had to get you excited because you can say what you want. We know Justin Jefferson is that dude, and he deserves to be in the conversation for best wide receiver in the NFL. If Daniil Hunter can stay healthy, he has all the tools to be in that consideration with guys up there like a T.J. Watt. Guys up there like a Joey Bosa, like a Nick Bosa. He has all those tools where people deserve to put him in the best defensive end category, and you saw a glimpse of that yesterday. Coming up next here on today's show, we're going to look at some winners and losers from the Packers uh, game here against Minnesota. Now, before I get into that, I'm a competitive person. Are you a competitive person? And I get it. We're on to Philadelphia this week. It's a big-time Monday night football game. But you know what? Here at Chat Sports, we got a lot of studios. And I want to be able to earn more studio time for the Vikings after a big-time win. We're doing a battle with Eagles today. And I'm going to be honest, we're the underdog. This Vikings channel is absolutely the underdog because Eagles today has over 25,000 subs. Do you know what? You're an underdog against the Packers. I don't want to only win on the field. I want to win in the studios as well. So let's get more subs than Eagles today. Hit that subscribe button. Get excited about the season because this team has a lot to be excited about. Let's go to some winners here. Number one, Justin Jefferson. He's laughable, man. You you watch him play, and at times you got to be like, am I watching a video game? Is he just that much better than everyone out there? I, I And I get it. Kirk's going to lock onto him. I don't blame him. There, there's a part of me that I'm like, Realistically, I feel like every single play, if you threw it to Jeff Justin Jefferson, you're going to win because one out of three downs, he's going to beat his man. One out of three downs, he's going to beat both guys that try to double team him. Nine catches, 184 yards, and two touchdowns. There's Cooper Cup, there's Devontae Adams, and then there's Justin Jefferson. Those are the three best wide receivers in the National Football League. Let's go to number two here. It's Kirk Cousins. We already talked about him. If you're going to be the quarterback and every single time anybody brings up Cousins' name, and I do it all the time too, right? Puts up good numbers, but he can never win the big game. Well, guess what he did? He didn't only win it. He looked way better than Aaron Rodgers. And I'm sorry, if he wins this division and puts up the numbers that he's been putting up over the past two seasons, he's going to be in that MVP discussion. Get ready for it. Let's go to number three here. I'm going to go to Darius Smith. Now, a lot of times, and I can already tell you, I've seen on Twitter that PFF had him rated a little bit lower. This is sometimes why I don't like PFF. I feel like it's just a bunch of nerds sitting behind a computer that don't actually watch the game. Watch the game. Turn on the film. He got his revenge against the Packers. He looked phenomenal being able to get after the quarterback. He had a sack. The pressure that he was getting, Rodgers was shook. You can't tell me he wasn't shook. So for that, Zadarius Smith was a winner to me. Now, if you love the fact that Zadarius Smith sacked Aaron Rodgers, and I loved it because as soon as it happened, they went close to him like on camera, and he just looked like a kid in the candy store. He was so happy, man. If that doesn't make you smile, I don't think you're a real one, man. So if that made you smile, just seeing Aaron Rodgers on the ground, I just can't stand that guy. Hit the sub button right now. Let's go to number four, Greg Joseph. Kickers are people too, right? I mean, how many years has it been? And one of the best, I think, things that I saw this offseason when you don't really see it often, when you talk to coaches or you talk to people in the past and you heard, yeah, leaving or letting go of Daniel Carlson was one of the biggest mistakes that this team has made. It's the truth because you go look at a lot of these past years, especially last year, and the amount of games that you lost on either missed field goal opportunities and not even missed field goal opportunities, when I think of some of the worst field goal misses in just the last two or three years, the Vikings come to my mind. I'm sorry. It's true. I, I, I think of almost when you line up for a field goal kick on Madden and then you direct them completely in the opposite direction of where you're trying to kick, and that's what happens. Greg Joseph, 3 of 3, along of 56, made both of his extra points. I think for the first time in almost two or three years, the Vikings fans, when a kicker comes out, they don't go... 
it's almost a little bit of a sigh of relief. Let's go to number five. It's got to be Kevin O'Connell, your head coach. You step in, and he fits the part. There's been a lot of confident conversations about people that come from Sean McVay, that whole tree. But from the interviews that I saw inside the locker room, from what the player said afterward, and then the preparation, it was all there. The team played loose. They had a lot of discipline. They didn't shoot themselves in the foot. And starters, even though they didn't play in the preseason, they were ready to go. One of the biggest storylines in the NFL here on Overreaction Monday around a lot of teams is this team's starters never played in the preseason. They looked unprepared. The Vikings knew who they were going up against. They were ready, and they executed. That's what good teams do. So what's your one-word reaction to Kevin O'Connell's debut? I want to know, what's your one-word reaction to Kevin O'Connell's debut? My one-word reaction is impressive, because that's the only word I can come up with right now. It was an impressive debut. Let's now go to some losers, and... It was hard. This, this might have been probably the most difficult thing I had to do when I walked into work today is come up with some losers after a 23-7 butt kicking. But Patrick Peterson, he got roasted on a touchdown. Okay, we'll give him the loss. For you box score hunters out there, some of you are going to be like, wait a minute, Jordan Hicks, he, he led the team in tackles, right? Yeah, but sometimes it matters where you're getting the tackles and the amount of missed tackles he had. According to the PFF, he was also rated one of the lowest defenders on the Vikings team. And then Ed Ingram. We kind of know what we're getting here out of Ed Ingram. I was hoping to get a little bit more out of the second round rookie from LSU, but there's going to be growing pains. That's what being a rookie is all about. But you know what? I look at the game that was had, and I'm going to be glass half full here. You not only embarrassed the Packers. You won 23-7. to Your top cornerback, loser. Your best probably linebacker, or at least the guy you just signed, loser. Your second round pick at uh, guard, who you're hoping could step on the offensive line, loser. If you can win a game like you did and these three guys didn't play well, imagine if everybody plays well. Yeah, MVP, Kirk Cousins. Vikings coming for you full steam ahead. We're going to be giving you all of that here on Vikings Now, so hit that subscribe button.